This is like my first time talking today in the morning. So my voice is a bit raspy. I actually like it. It's actually, I wish my voice was naturally raspy. It's probably not even raspy, but it's raspy for me and low. <laughs> um, I'm sweating. Like really bad and sweating. What is up my beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kira Graves. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am a queer, gender fluid actor and content creator and I make a lot of gay ass videos. And my pronouns are they, them, and she, her. So today, I'm gonna be talking about obscure or like not super widely talked about childhood signs that I am indeed queer and into women and non-binary people, and men too, kind of, sort of, I don't know, maybe. These are just childhood signs that I liked girls, and I made a video like this with my pal Georgia Bridgers a long time ago in like 2019, woo, seems like five years ago. If you haven't seen that, I will link it below. Make sure you go watch it afterwards if you want. If you want, you don't have to, but. But these ones are kind of like more obscure signs that like I honestly didn't realize until now and honestly didn't realize until I started ma making a lot of TikToks. A lot of these you will find in my TikToks. If you wanna go follow me on TikTok, you can do that. I will put it on the screen and my Instagram and my partner and I also have a Patreon where we have like life updates on there. We have a podcast for our besties tier, exclusive videos and photos that we post. I will link that below. And for a little background info, I came out when I was, I think 17 as bisexual initially. And I still like kind of resonate with that term, but I like queer better or pansexual. Bi and pan are very similar anyways. I don't really care about labels to be honest. Like I'm not super into them. So I think the best label for me would be queer because it's just an umbrella term. I am into girls, boys romantically, and non-binary people. These definitely were indicators that I am queer. And I didn't realize until my adult years. And I looked back on these things and I'm like, wow, Kira, how did you not know? Without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's get into the signs. Fuck, I'm hot. Sign number one, liking boys that were like feminine and had more like feminine qualities and attributes. Maybe they had softer features, maybe they were sensitive. I am in general attracted to femininity and I think femininity to me, like obviously anyone can be feminine, like you don't have to be a girl to be feminine, um, but I just in general was always really attracted to more feminine boys. And this also kind of goes into my next point of like, I really always wanted to do my ex-boyfriend's makeup and I did do it like multiple times, not against their will, like they obviously agreed to it, but I would always just be like, can I do your makeup? Can I do your makeup? And then like I would look at it and be like, Wow, I love it so much. And they were kind of just like, Ugh, get it off me, get it off me. <laughs> they put up with me so well. I also really love doing makeup, like in general, that's just a fact. Sorry if my teeth are yellow, by the way, I'm drinking coffee. Why am I apologizing? <laughs> This could play into the fact that I love femininity and yes, I love feminine boys, but also I love feminine girls and I just love femininity in, in anyone regardless of their gender. That was kind of a little sign that I might be a little Another thing with my ex-boyfriends is I would always ask them if they were bi or gay, like straight up gay. I don't know why, but like I really, in the back of my mind wanted them to be bi? Maybe it's so that I could like relate to them better? I really don't know what that was all about. I don't know if that was like a me wanting to date a boy that's into boys because I'm gender fluid and some days I feel like a boy. So maybe I wanted to feel like a boy dating a boy. I don't really know to be honest. <laughs> if anyone can explain that to me, that would be great. But yeah, I would always just ask them like, maybe because I wanted them to be a part of the community. And like, this is before I knew I was queer too. I was like, are you gay? Like, are you bi? And they're like, I don't know. Like, not really, maybe. <laughs> and like, if they'd say maybe, I'd be like, oh, tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> and I'd be like, would you ever kiss a boy? And they're like, okay, Kira, like you can relax. <laughs> I don't know why you're asking me these questions. But yeah, looking back on it, um, that was probably like really weird for me to keep asking my boyfriends. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Another really funny thing that also comes from like my Catholic background is I always wanted to be a nun when I grew up. As some of you may know, or some of you may not know, 
I grew up Catholic, I went to a Catholic school, went to church, and was highly influenced by Catholicism, and I was actually very religious when I was younger. Like I, you know, read the Bible, I followed the Ten Commandments to a T, I would like, you know, confess all the time, and I was really interested in the lifestyle of a nun. And I really wanted to become a nun when I was older. And a lot of people were like, Kira, why? No offense to nuns, like, good for you. But the main reason I wanted to become a nun was because I didn't want to have sex with men. Amen. <laughs> Amen, sister. Yeah, I think the part about like nuns being celibate like really intrigued me and I really liked that and I was like, oh, if I could just like never have sex with a man, like that would be great. And also just not attracted to that. So, and I posted a TikTok where a lot of people were actually like agreeing with me on this and they felt the same way, which is insane because I thought it was just me. But I know a lot of you come from Catholic background, so it makes sense. I never knew that like sex with a woman was possible like I didn't think that existed when I was younger I didn't think that gay existed like way back when I thought it was just a myth or I thought it was like something you'd see in the TV but like never in real life I didn't know anyone personally who was gay so it was like such a mystery to me I thought the only way to have sex was to have sex with a man so therefore that's why I wanted to become a nun so anyway <laughs> when I actually found out that like gay people existed in real life I was very drawn to them and like I wanted to be their friend and I just remember like you know, being a tween and meeting like my first gay person and being like asking them so many questions and being like, oh my God, but it's, what's it like? And just being so drawn to them and also drawn to like the LGBTQ plus community and later on becoming very passionate about um, queer rights and trans rights. I know at the time I was closeted, so I didn't know that I was, well, I didn't know I was queer at all, but I just thought I was like really passionate. I thought I was like really an activist, but like a like an ally, you know, like a straight cis ally. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. But yeah, I was like super into the activism. That's a very good sign that you might end up being queer. I created a, a, a GSA, a gay straight alliance at my school when I was still in the closet. So I had no idea I was queer, but I was just like really passionate about it, you know? So I created the club. I was like, this means a lot to me. And this wasn't like my personal experience, but I have heard of a lot of people being extremely homophobic towards the LGBTQ plus community. And they're actually a closeted queer person. And maybe they have, they've had like a lot of, um, internalized homophobia. So sometimes when people are really extremely outwardly homophobic, they might be closeted queers. Oh. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Wow. Wow. What else? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> okay. This is a really funny story. Um, this was probably when I was like, 10 or something. I might have shared this story before. So I was like in the car with my mom. We were driving somewhere. I think we we're in the mall parking lot actually. And randomly out of the blue, like we weren't even talking about the subject, but out of the blue, I just start crying, like bawling my eyes out. My mom was like, what is the matter, Kira? Like we were not even talking about anything. Like, why are you crying? And I was just like, mom, like, I really don't want to be a lesbian. Like, what if I end up being a lesbian? I'm so scared because like, obviously I was, you know, taught that being gay is a sin. Being gay is wrong. It's like completely against my religion growing up. So like, that's why I was really scared of it. So part of me must have known that I, you know, the little baby queer was in there and I was scared, I was terrified. And my mom just goes, oh Kira, don't worry, you're not a lesbian. <laughs> Uh, my mom is very accepting of my queerness now, so. But, you know, we all, we all learn and grow and evolve as human beings, you know? We're not perfect. <laughs> but yeah, she was like, don't worry, Kira. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Flash forward like seven years later, come out to her at the kitchen table. Mom, I think I'm, I think I'm bisexual. These are all kind of out of like chronological order. Probably would have been good if I did it in chronological order, but anyway. This kind of goes along with like my fascination with gay people. So once I like became old enough, like a teenager to watch 
shows with like more mature subject matter. I would, if there was like a gay kiss in it or like a gay sex scene, even with just two gay men, I would like rewind it and watch it again, like over and over again, especially if I was by myself. Like I obviously wouldn't do it if I was like with my mom. Yeah, I would be like watching Netflix and being like, oh my God. And like, I would feel some type of way, even if it was just gay men, like just gays in general. I was like, <gasps> like I just, I was like, oh. <laughs> Especially Orange is the New Black. Once I started watching Orange is the New Black, it was all over for, for straight Kira. Oh, family, la familia. Was that good Spanish? I'm not Spanish, I can't judge because I'm not, I'm not, I don't speak Spanish. No, oh, but you know it better than me. How's this chair holding? I don't know. This is like 240 a, pounds. This is a 250 pounds. <laughs> 260 pounds. Oh. Oh. Oh, she, <laughs> she likes your breath. And I just brushed my teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, do you want to tell my friends a childhood sign if you feel comfortable? You have a lot of friends. I do have a lot of friends. Uh. You want to take the chair? No. Okay. <laughs> I would always get like intimidated by other girls in my class. Yeah. Like I wanted to talk to them, but like I couldn't because I was nervous around them. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was just me being shy. Yeah. That's one. I love that, Lauren. Thank you for your input. <laughs> okay, what's the last one? I feel like I have one more. Okay, so this was obviously when I was still closeted. I would rarely watch porn because it was like against my Catholic religion, my Catholic faith. But when I did, when I couldn't resist the urge, I mean, I usually only watched lesbian porn. That was a sign. <laughs> but I do know a lot of straight girls watch lesbian porn. I don't know, I don't know why. But um, also, no, yeah. Whoa. If you think about it, cause like a lot of straight girls are like, yeah, like lesbian porn is just so much better. But like, are you straight? I guess they could be imagining that like they're one, one of the girls that's getting pleased and they're like imagining their boyfriend or something. But then why don't they just watch straight porn? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Or if I was just watching like a movie scene with like a straight couple kissing or whatever, I would like be focusing on the girl and kind of like imagining that I was kissing her or just like being really attracted to her kissing someone. Yeah, cause I didn't really watch straight porn, but like I did watch shows that had like straight sex, heteros having sex. Oh, okay, and the last one. I don't know if this is like a universal experience, but I always wanted to be very affectionate with my female friends when I was younger. And usually they didn't want to be that affectionate with me. Or maybe I just had non-affectionate friends. I don't know. I would always want to like just hold their hand and not even in like a romantic way. Like I just wanted to like feel close to them. And I don't know if that's like a gay reason or if that's something else, but I also like really wanted to cuddle with them and just like feel close to them because it was like comforting and I wouldn't do that with any of my male friends. So I don't know if that's a gay sign. I feel like some of these may not be gay signs, but maybe they are. Let me know what you think. Comment below your childhood gay signs. I would love to read them. Let me know if you related to any of these stories. Okay. That's it for this video. Let me know what you all want to see next. Here's a hug. You are valid, you are beautiful as always, and I will see you in my next video. Mwah.